the man who took the colour photographs, which were in the Hitler biography, is a photographer called Walter Frenz. He's still alive. Eventually, when I got to know him very well, he showed me his collection of 3,000 colour transparencies that he took when he was on Adolf Hitler's staff as a film cameraman. In fact, there's a picture of him earlier in the book with his film camera taking, taking a picture. Beautiful photographs. And I used to go and visit him at Lake Constance, which is near Switzerland, as you know. And we would talk far into the night, and eventually he would describe to me how he saw a mass execution going on. Himmler, the chief of the SS, came up to him and said, Herr, Him Herr Frenz, it's boring here in Hitler's headquarters, isn't it? You want to go on an outing with me? And Frenz said, sure. And Fr Himmler says, well, we're off to the Eastern Front for three days. And for three days, they toured the Russian Front, visiting SS units and police units. And Frenz has told me the same story over the last 15 years, two or three times, and he adds more and more details each time he tells me, you know, the way the memory remembers things that he didn't really want to say before. And he said, one evening as we're drinking, Himmler says to me, Herr Frenz, tomorrow morning I'm going to go and witness a mass execution. Do you want to come along? Now, I've got to admit, this is where the German mentality and the English mentality obviously diverge. If somebody said to me, Mr. Irving, tomorrow I'm going to go and witness a mass execution. Do you want to come along? I would find something else to do that morning, believe me. I'd look at my watch, I'd say, well, my time today was rather crowded. Thanks for the invitation, but can I give a rain check on him? Frenz said, clicked his heels and said, Herr, Herr Reichsführer, I'll be delighted to come along. And he finds himself at seven or eight next morning standing on the edge of a field, the way you've imagined it. A large, windswept, desolate field somewhere outside Minsk. It was August 1941. We've located it now. We know exactly what day it was. Watching as truckloads of civilians are driven up to pits on the far side of the field, being unloaded from these trucks, forced to line up, forced to take off all their valuable clothes and their valuables and put them in boxes and then stand up in a line against the edge of a pit and be machine gunned into this pit. And he watches it for an hour. And he describes various other details. He's telling me the story at two o'clock in the morning over a bottle of rather fine wine and his wife, who's listening, round-eyed. This is back in about 1980, 1975. She says, Walter, you never told me this. And he's rather embarrassed. He, he, he's obviously, the Germans say, fake galopiert. He's let his mouth, he's running off his mouth a bit. And his wife says, Walter, were there women, was there, were there women and children there being killed as well? And he says, I can't remember. And you know he can remember. You see, I got these people to talk to me. Hitler's private secretary, a dear old lady who died 10 years ago, she was his secretary for 12 years, from 1933 until one week before he committed suicide. She was with him in the bunker in Berlin, Christa Schroeder. She became so close to me as I worked on her that she actually gave me the only self-portrait that Hitler sketched of himself. I, I have it in the car outside, a very valuable piece of paper. She said, you know, I think you're wrong about Hitler and the Jews. This is again at like three in the morning, a conversation over tea or wine. I think you're wrong about, uh, about the chief, she called him, the chief and the Jews. Or A.H., she called him A.H. as well. A.H. could be very cruel. And knowing the way with Christa Schroeder to get her to talk was to play her like a fish, not to tug, but just reel, reel out a bit of line. I, I, I said, well, what do you mean? She said, I was with him on the Night of the Long Knives. Now, the Night of the Long Knives in history was in June 1934, a year after Hitler came to power when he decided to liquidate all his senior rivals in the Nazi party, the brown shirts, Ernst Röhm and a dozen others. In fact, it was 84 people who were finally murdered that night. She said, I was in Berlin and I got a telephone call from AH. He wanted me to fly straight over to join him in Bad Godesburg. He needed me. He needed him. He needed the secretaries not to dictate to, but he needed them to talk to. He needed human company. And they flew down that night from the Rhine city of Bad Godesburg down to Munich, and they climbed into those big Mercedes open limousines and drove out to a town on the outskirts of Munich. She described all this. She said she was with him when he went into the hotel. He arrested all his arrivals, had them taken away by the SS, and they were shot later that day in the prisoner's title line, just lined up against the wall and shot. It was the first bloody massacre of the Nazi regime. And she said, later on that afternoon, they flew back to Berlin, and Hitler was obviously exhausted by the day's events. When they got back to Berlin, the German capital, Hitler vanished into his chancellery, into his building, like the White House. He vanished into his chancellery, and she didn't see him for an hour. And 
She said, Mr. Irving, I went down into the cafeteria by myself and I ordered dinner. The chief and I, we were both vegetarians and I knew he had eventually come down. And after about an hour, he showed up and he stood in the door, buttoning up his jacket and he said, so Fräulein Schröder, now I have had a bath and I feel as clean as a newborn babe again. She told me that, I suppose, 15 years ago. 40 years probably had passed since she, she heard him say those words. She'd never spoken them to anybody else, but those words had drifted around in her memory for 40 years, and she had longed to tell somebody this telling sentence, what the chief had said to her after killing his closest friends and rivals. I've had a bath, and I'm as clean as a newborn babe again. A sentence that really says it all about him, and about quite a lot of people.